hello gorgeous people hi guys um so one i can't find my microphone for this camera it's really annoying um ooh, let's, why is why are you betraying me my face is literally here wow this camera is so disrespectful but um what am i trying to say can't find my microphone so hopefully this sounds good i'm getting ready to do a uh, panel today at afropunk <laughs> um i said it out loud and it was like oh wow this is actually happening today um but I'm really excited. I'm a little, I don't know if I'm a little anxious. I don't know if I am. I think once I start seeing, once I get there and I start seeing people, it's going to go away. Um, because I like going places in public places with people. <laughs> I'm one of those extroverted people like that. Um, I love people. I love gatherings. Um, but I'm sure once I sit on the stage, I'm probably going to be, I don't know if I'll be nervous. I was nervous before. Now, I'm, yeah, I would say I'm anxious. I'm excited and nervous to get all, all at once. So I'm just about to do my makeup, um, give a good beat. And when I'm getting dressed, I'll show you guys my outfits. I have about two hours. Yes, about two hours. Um, I actually want to be done in an hour or so, like completely, like, but I have two hours. So I'm about to eat breakfast, do my makeup. I just got showering, got done showering, and um, I just need to be out of here. Because there's a car service coming to pick me up, and they have a specific time to be here. So I need to be completely ready to go out the door 10 minutes before the car is even planning on being here. You hear me? I'm not trying to be late. I don't like being late. And I'm actually getting to the place earlier than I need to be. I just want to scope it out. If I need to capture content before everything starts, I want to do that. Um, my friend is coming with me. So any content that you guys see from those vlog from the event will probably be from her. Um, just because I don't, y'all, I don't like being late places. I hate it. I hate it. Unless it's like one of those things where it's like, you can be here from this time to this time. There's no specific time frame. But if something starts at a specific time, I hate being late. And I cannot believe we have cultivated a culture of people that are like, you know, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there when I'm there. It's like, ew, I literally hate that. If I invite you somewhere and I tell you start at 9 and you're not communicating that you're running late, after 9.30, you can't come in. I don't like late people. And I feel like... Really, it actually, you could tell, it irritates me when people, like, be going to be on black people's time. No, bitch, get there when I tell you to get there. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't like being late. And whenever I'm late somewhere, it irritates me. So I just want to, you know, scope out the little situation, get comfortable, say hello to the right people, um, or say hello to everybody, and just make sure I'm set up for success and ask all the right questions and things that I need to do. So I'm have some cereal. I don't want anything too heavy. Um, ooh, nope, that's gonna take too much time. I'm like, do I want waffles? After I just said I didn't want something heavy. But anyway, yeah, cereal, get a good beat, um, get dressed, and just be ready. So yeah. I'm like, I, I really hope it's, I know it's going to
been a lot of information, like, the it's last fine. couple of days, but, like, a lot of things have been confirmed, like, the last, last minute. Days. Yeah. My so, emails have been like that, too, because I'm going to L.A. on Monday. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, for, like, a squat thing? Yes. Oh so, I have, like, emails from everyone. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and I'm like, whose email am I answering today? Yeah. <laughs> so, hi. Um, I know, because I remember you said you were going to wear this lip color. This eyeshadow is the one right here. I love the it. one that looks purple. Yeah. That's what I have in my eyeliner. Oh my God. It's like green where you turn. Yeah. Because yeah. it's Pat McGrath. She has a grip on my wallet, and I don't appreciate that. I know. <laughs> okay, let me put my glasses back on so I can see. Her story event with these esteemed guests. Um, today we will be having a conversation about the beauty industry from all sectors and corners. Today this panel is called Turning Passions into Purpose. So I'm here with figures in the beauty industry, Sephora, makeup artists, and business owners to talk about their professions, their inspirations, their impact, and their goals, and how you can also take the next steps to success in the beauty industry. So, let's get started. I'm gonna introduce my lovely guests. To my right, I have Isola Spice, and then I have Sharonda Curtis, and then I have Desiree Benedejo. So, I'm gonna open up the floor to everybody with this question. When did you first realize that you wanted to enter the beauty industry? At what point in your life or career? All right, I, I think it started for me when I first saw the expressions on my friends and family's faces of getting their makeup done for like proms or special occasions and getting their hair done. I'm a licensed cosmetologist as well. And I think from that moment of seeing that joy, that instant gratification of what my hands could go to work to do, um, that was the moment I was like, I want to do this and I want to be able to impact other people that look like me, um, that aspire to do these things that you think is unattainable. Um, and I just, from that moment, it, just to be able to exchange and transfer that energy to something so beautiful to change lives, it's like, that was it for me. Um, for me, I wish it were sooner. Um, I was in my 20s. I um, practiced law for seven years. I've always loved beauty. I personally struggled with acne. Um, and so I've always had this obsession with skincare. But I always assumed it was a side project, a side interest. Um, so about six, seven years into being an attorney, I realized, first of all, there were so many women, um, black women specifically, that were creating beautiful brands at the time, um, in the natural hair space at the time, and I was so inspired by them, and I think I was able to see through them a path to turning this passion into, into a business that really, you know, suited and um, spoke to my community and to my interests in a way that I wanted to. Um, so yeah, I was in my 20s at that time. Um, for me, I would say it started when I was younger. My mom was always a makeup girl, so I've always loved it. And um, loving color and like looking through the magazines. And, like, there are people that actually have this for a job, or when I watch movies, um, like these are people that do something like this, so I wanted to do it myself. And then in the life and starting with YouTube, I'm like, this is really a job that I can do. And it's something that I'm already passionate about that I love doing on myself anyway. So I would say maybe about 12 years now, I might do it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. You all came in at different stages when you realized that you wanted to enter the industry. This was a little later, but it paid off, clearly. Um, I want to get back to that 
later, but this question is for Isola and Sharonda. The barrier to entry for entering the makeup industry, I would say, has changed with the advent of social media. Now we're seeing a lot more self-taught makeup artists and professional trained makeup artists as well within the same industry, same opportunities, same gigs, um, all getting you know wonderful platforms and opportunities. So how do you think that shift has helped or hurt makeup artists and the makeup industry? I don't know. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> um, I really feel like it's great when you're self-taught. I mean, that's an innate ability. Uh, I was self-taught. However, I think the pros and cons of it is you can be limited or stifled because you're applying whatever it is, skill of art, hair, makeup, only on one canvas, only on one anatomy, understanding one skin texture or type. And so therefore you can limit opportunities in the industry when it comes to training. And training is technically sound and educated in the anatomy, science, um, color harmony, theory, skin care, skin textures. Um, when you understand its shape and, and facial planes and things like that, that takes you deeper dive into the industry where you're unstoppable. Okay, because that's the education that no one can take from you. And that innate talent that you were born with, just to be able to pick up something and recreate or copy, that adds an extra bonus on how far you can go. So I always say talent and technique will help you thrive and like soar you to the top. But just having uh, some kind of technique with no talent attached or vice versa, it'll limit you. And so being able to have that uh, and I know it's some fuse, sometimes we were talking before earlier, it could be some fuse uh, of like a you know, train versus non-train in the same atmosphere of space. Um, people are people. Um, at the end of the day, I would say anybody that's self-taught still get education, go to a school, get some classes, understand your craft in its entirety, understand the anatomy, understand skin textures and formulations and mediums that you're working with, because that'll definitely drive you even further. And what was the analogy you used Prior. It's a sports analogy. I think. Oh yeah, yeah when I was talking about like if you're a pro baseball player or any basketball player or anything like that, you can get a coach to try to you know help you do jump shots and train and train you right. But if you don't have a natural talent for that, you won't be as great as you could be. You know, it's a lot of people that you know get the best coaches and they're never like at that soaring top moment or level in their career that they could be because it's not a natural talent. It's not something that you just, just pick up easily. So when it comes to those type of things, having that natural talent is definitely important, but that technical skill attached to that will make you super successful. Talent and technique. And Lucilla, you are something. Yes, I'm definitely self-taught, but um, I agree with Sharonda because you can be self-taught, but if you don't know technical things, technical terms, you're only gonna be able to do one style or one type of makeup. But I feel like social media now has helped a lot of people that were technically trained to come on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, to be able to share what they know. So I don't feel like now if you're self-taught that you have to like go to school. It depends on what state you are. You have to be licensed to do makeup on like TV. You have to be in a union. So that helps, knowing that helps if that's what you want to do. But if you want to do everyday makeup for brides and you're not in a state where it's required, you don't really need to go to school. Um, I taught myself how to do makeup on my face. And once I learned that, I started gathering my friends. I understood skin texture, skin type. Um, if someone is dehydrated, but they're not oily, I know I can do that type of makeup. But if you're self-taught and um, you can only do makeup on yourself, and you call yourself a makeup artist, I think that's where the shift or the rift it's like, you're not really a makeup artist, you just know how to do your makeup on your face amazing. Because I've had, I've done like fashion week, and if you cannot do makeup on every single skin tone, you are not a makeup artist. It's just, you're just not, you're not. Because you can do your own makeup, which is fine. Um, so I think people that are self-taught nowadays, a lot of people are also learning to do different things because they want to do it as a job. And I think it's important to take classes um, because you can know a technique. Um, and I could, I still learn today. I've been doing makeup, like I said, for 10 years, but I'm still learning. And now that I'm in a stage where I know so much, the people that I'm trying to learn from are like, do this in my 
experience, pat my back, because these are people that have been doing it for so long, and a lot of those people are also self -taught. Those are huge makeup artists. Yes. Uh, who are some makeup artists or people that you looked up to or smiling in your career after? Were there anyone that you looked up to? When I first started, it's been, what, over 27 years now. But when I first started, it really wasn't a lot of influence. It wasn't a lot of social media. It wasn't the YouTube. So it was mostly like peers and people around or either models like Iman and it was back in the day, Sam Vine, and you know, that would actually like make black women look beautiful and enrich their skin tone, the golden olive, beautiful tones, and not like dull or flat or lackluster. And I was just like, man, they look so good. And Sam Fine was working it out with all those models and actresses back then. I was just like, wow, like that's awesome. Like they look really good. I want to be able to, you know, just enhance our beauty like that, you know, without masking it or making it flat or whatever, you know, that wasn't, un, you know, unattractive. And so from that point, that's when I just was like, yeah, I want to I I kind of model myself after people that are true to understanding who your audience is, not veering, being very authentic about what you're doing as an artist and who you want to enhance, who you want to elevate when it comes to your artistic skills. So that, that was more of my playing field for them. Okay, outfit. Hey. I need some clothes for y'all. All right, I'm trying to get a super big one for this piece. I'm just trying to go magic. Hey neighbor. Hey, you look nice. You look nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, we walked in masks all day. We forgot how to be people to each other. And yesterday we talked about agony and ended the night triumphantly. Today we will, will be no different. We delight in the ecstasy. Ecstasy, by definition, is an intense joy or delight, a state of emotion so intense that one is carried beyond rational thought and self-control, which okay. is to say, we are going to hold you like family. We're going to hold you like cousins, like aunties, like Miss Jenkins, like Auntie Maybell, <laughs> like Tia, and, 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 and Abuela. We're going to do all that for you today. That's just the nature of black women. This is our rebirth. Look at your neighbor one more time. Say, hey, sis. Hey, sis. Now give them a compliment only we can give. Okay, hat. <laughs> because we rise and rise and rise and rise together towards liberation. It was Brittany Cooper who said, with triumph, we delight in ecstasy, right? The collective orchestrated fury of black women can move the whole world. <laughs> Brittany Cooper, author of Good Feminism. I mean, what better way, what better way to open up the night than to look and feel and understand how the blood moves by watching with all of our being this amazing presentation. First, we will welcome choreography from Ebony Williams.
Okay, guys, quick room tour. Um, this is the bathroom. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And they set me up for success because they know. They know me. This is so nice. Oh my God. Just. I'm so excited. I'm excited for this because I was going to get this. I don't remember why I didn't, but yes. So we have the blush and eyeshadow. Well, this camera is not going to focus like that. Oh, I already have this. I have all of these things except this one. I literally have all of these things. And that's me. <laughs> I had to be super comfortable. Oh my God, I look so disproportionate right now. But I had to be comfortable and warm because it is rainy and cold here in LA, child. Not as cold as New York, but the bed is comfy. It well, it looks comfy. It's a cute painting. And look. I was just smelling this fragrance the other day and it smells so good this is the new fragrance from clean oh my god and the Fenty fragrance yes oh because I love the smell good child um I'm about to see how quick my in and out I don't know I'll go see what's downstairs because I really want I don't know why I want a really juicy burger I want a juicy <laughs> a juicy burger and some fries because I already know I'm about to be having some alky alky alcohol some drinks you know they may not be strong I wanted to go to the rooftop we can't do that because it's raining well it's closed I'm pretty sure it's a closed rooftop um, so, I'm going to get something to eat first. After that, I'm going to come shower and just relax before I have to, like, put my makeup on. Um, and after all of that, or if I'm not relaxing, I'm going to put my stuff away. I, I need to put the stuff away. 
actually that's what I'm gonna do um but first I'm gonna find something to eat and it's a little cool in here so I'm going to turn the heat on and let me show you guys outside look at the weather oh it stopped raining but look how gorgeous this garden is It's really, really nice. The last time we were here, we stayed at the Dream Hotel, which is like across the street. But yeah, no one is down there because of the rain. Look how wet the seats are. <laughs> um, but that would have been lovely, I'm sure. I'm gonna show you guys when it's nighttime what it looks like it's gonna be so pretty with all the lights on and stuff um but yeah let me go get myself situated charge my camera go get some food come back put stuff away and um put stuff away and just relax until i have to like go be on the go and text the girlfriends like where y'all at okay where y'all at so yeah. Like a creep over here. That is so funny. <laughs> For like socials, it still it still works. I kind of be doing two jobs at the same time. Flex. Oh, look at the keychain. Wait, the keychain is supposed to be representing a surfboard. Wow, the keychain is that what it is that what? It, oh, sorry. Like, okay, if I work really hard in 20 years, I can have my own brand. 
like the other makeup artists at that time that were there, like Nars and Laura Mercier. And so my little 17 year old brain was like, okay, well they're, they're 40, so I have to be almost 40 when I do it. And so <laughs> I actually launched the brand exactly 20 years from that day, but I started working on it. So a dream come true. I'm like making sure I have everyone in the video. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm you good. good. I yes. just realized it's a camera. I was yes. like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's my camera. Yes, it's so That's like so convenient. Cool. Is it good yes. quality too? Yes, 4K. I need something like that. Yeah. I'm like I'm tired of balance on my pinky. Girl. And, like, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It is. Okay. Oh. I like how I was just at all these. Day about to get you about to get a massage. Yes. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? Did I just... Yeah, we definitely met in New York. I was like, we just, we just did this. <laughs> I'm like good with faces. I was like, I'm not, I just saw her. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Hello, Packet. We're going to be sending full-size goodies to everybody who's here, but we have some little packets and deluxe samples in the other side. Because why not? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. Right. I have time. Right. How have you been enjoying the event? Has it been good? Fun? Yes, yeah. it has. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay. I have not. Just like one of those hot stone ones. That's it. Yeah, it's like really awesome because it helps with the bloating for water retention, the Feels good already. Yes, thanks. Now I'm gonna start with your hands, my dear. Okay. Which one would you like me to start with? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we were just like, you know, hearing some sneak peek stuff, yeah, but we couldn't see it. But it's like, okay. just, just show us. But just, right. Okay. Like, I can't show you. <laughs> can't. If you want to do a meet and greet with Mario, come to the stage now. I'm not